Okay guys, I am here. I'm going to show you what you do when you start out and what not to do when you're starting out on Neverwinter. Uh, they've changed it quite a bit in the last time since I really started playing a whole lot. Some things are a lot easier uh, than what they used to be. So <clears throat> hopefully my background music isn't, uh, or the background noise of the game isn't too loud, but basically when you're starting, um, the, the races don't matter as much as they used to. It used to be they mattered quite a bit. Um, now it's not so much you can get away with anything. You pretty much do want to, you know, build around this. And for whatever character you're going at, you might want to look up what, what race to do. But it's not really as important anymore. You can basically take a human, human now and build a cleric but for instance um i if i was doing it and i wanted to get the best that i could um it would probably be like a um, half orc or a one of the elves for that but for human or for just say, anybody's sake of the video we're gonna do human because they're pretty across the board pretty okay especially if you're gonna do like a tank build a human's pretty good or a half orc or i mean a um dwarf a dwarf is really good for a tank build as well um so they've gotten some things that made it easier now you don't have to pick what you have to pick what class you'll be but you don't have to pink pick whether you're a tank or you're very specific anymore it waits till 30 if you if you see there on Warlock that there's two different types of um, either dealing damage or healing. So a Warlock can also be like a Cleric almost now. The most balanced class in the game, I think. If you're, if you're going for a balanced player that you can play by yourself and not have problems, is a Paladin. That uh, they can heal, they can tank. They can deal actually a fair amount of damage if you build them right. Um, it's probably the most balanced class in the game for for a lot of players. Now I'm not a never win a pro or nothing like that, but I can help you out with that front. If you're looking to be in a guild and you don't have a whole lot of friends on on Neverwinter, um, definitely go with a cleric. I've never seen a guild turn away a cleric. Uh, everybody needs a good cleric. Um, also, honestly, everybody worries about damage so much they forget about the tanks. Uh, so, as as a group leader of our guild, I play as tanks because uh, it's it can be really hard to have a good tank. So, so I'm gonna build this now. This is a big change, guys. This is huge. They used to have to roll for these stats. Now it doesn't matter anymore. So. I, honestly, this is huge. Just say every class will have up at the top. As a fighter, constitution and strength is useful scores. So if you have a race bonus like this, which a lot of them do, you want to add um, add it to a score that's going to help you. Like as if you're going to long term going to build a tank, constitution is going to help you. Or if you do a damage, strength is always a good one. So, uh, it just depends on what you're trying to build. But this is the only thing you really need to know now is what bonus to pick. You don't have to worry about your rolls. There is no rolls anymore. And for the sake of the video, I'll be as a tank build, a tank fighter, this is what I'd want to do. Um, customizations don't matter anymore. Um, you can do whatever you want this just pick whatever one you like I always do this one because I'm always like the the justice uh, Knight of you know duty a dutiful knight uh, But th that doesn't matter it doesn't affect the gameplay at all same with where you're from so that being said, guys, I'm going to bring you in on my other character that's two days old, and I'm going to show you just a couple things real quick on how to level fast and some need-to-know things. All right, be right back, guys. All right, we're uh, back on this character, which is about two days old. 
I uh, definitely will show you how to get a character to 57 in two days. It's really not that hard, but first, uh, I see a lot of people throw a lot of money at this game, and I wanted to just give you a quick helpful hint if you're brand new, or what, if you're going to spend money, which you don't need to, you can grind out anything in the game, but if, if you were going to, what is a viable thing to do? Uh, this is a game that very easily you can pound out a bunch of money at and not get nothing for if you're not careful. The one things that are worth getting is for sure, let me get down there, is a VIP. That is worth it. Um, I get that every month. That's worth it completely. Um, there's a lot of stuff that is not worth it. Don't get anything in the companions class or the mounts because you can just get Zen and you can convert Zen using this Astral Diamond Exchange and it's always cheaper on the market. I can tell you that right now. It's always cheaper on the market. Uh, so don't ever just buy a mount hand right. The other thing that can be worth it on here is when you do buy a starter pack or something, this is free when you do buy something and this is actually pretty worth it. Um, this has, uh, if I remember right, an extra bag. Oh yeah, extra bag, a dog, uh, um, a dog companion, which isn't too bad. Um, and then preserving lords, which can be very helpful. The the retraining stuff and the token and the, the tokens, they're not really that handy. And that personal greater stone. That's good to put away for later. Don't ever use that in the beginning of the game. It doesn't matter if you die in the beginning of the game. It matters more later on. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't really get a whole lot on this. Uh, maybe a starter pack, but these are not the ones I would be getting. There's a couple in the store. And then, when you do buy, if you do, all your stuff will show up at this guy. And we are at Protector's Enclave at the top over here. Um, and then I will be back, guys, because now I'm going to show you the quick things about leveling. Uh, one thing you guys always need to do when you're starting out is if you see these blue exclamation marks after your first day, do them. They're completely worth it along with praying um, you'll get a you'll get a uh, mission for over here that'll be in here when you get to about rank 15 or so and you have to talk to her and the praying is completely worth it because you get bonus XP and a lot of stuff for your character praying um, also like I said if you see these the on you. take these the Let's take them the they're dailies blue means it's a daily thing and like I do this every day uh, when I pop in and I've only played two days on this character and I'm already 57 now I'm gonna take you over to the guild stronghold and I'm gonna show you the fastest way to level uh, so I'll be right back guys alright guys we're back at my guild I'm a guild leader of this guild here it's uh, USA Pride if you the best way to level up in the game is get within the guild you don't have to play with other people but get in the guild um, if you watch this video you don't have a guild when you're starting out, you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, I'll, add, I'll add a person to help level up. But you see these blue ones, you get these on the second day of being in a guild. Um, and definitely go do these because they're oh, super oh, easy. 9,000 XP to complete quests that you're already going to be doing that hand? day. So you want to take that. Um, this one is, if hey I remember there, right, the guild has defeat 50 enemies. Well, you're going to be in there doing so quests coast. anyway, so you might as well, Nothing you know, these are free me. things. Just a simple... You can see from the XP that these are really good. Oh, hi, adventure. Um, the order of the do appropriate dungeon, the which guild. you should be doing a dungeon any day, every day anyway. So that'll help you out. That's 45,000 experience points now. I have some boosters on my character by having enchantments now, but there's it's still probably 30,000 experience points for even somebody without any experience boosters, uh, which are free. They're not, it's not like something I bought. 
Um, and then there should be a random Q, which honestly you should be doing that once a day too for your rough astral diamonds. Um, and then we'll go over here. The builder should this should be Good asking day, for help. Yeah, the and that's a super easy mission. Uh, I was level 57 to start out, and now I'm gonna turn in these quests. And I add XP for doing the other stuff too, as well. Oh, but the quests were asking, the so here we go. You're back. Oh, hello, and we should get some XP things. here. Hey, you're back. Hey there, adventurer. The for steward wants doing me to all do these tasks. Good day. The orc. Oh, I've been done. And where is the last one? Good day, adventurer. Last one in here. So that was. That was eight levels in about two hours at 57. So, so you can see how easy it actually is to get levels in here. You shouldn't, in like four days, you should be able to get a character 80. I mean, there's a small chance I could get there in a day. I don't think so, but. So, if you guys get into a guild, it's really easy. The praying thing is another way to get XP quick. Um, and like I said, guys, if you find this video helpful, comment down there if you guys need help in another area of Neverwinter. Um, but in two days, playing a couple hours, you should get into 30s pretty easy. I play like seven hours for two days and I'm at a 57. Uh, but if you guys need help, uh, just put down in the comments what you need help with and I'll, I'll definitely try to make a video on it. I'm not a Neverwinter pro, but I see that there's there's not very good information now that Neverwinter's changed quite a bit, so I will see you guys all later. Hey, Rumble, you need to go to the right. You <laughs> 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 <laughs>